Hello. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Simpson. Hi, good evening. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? Yeah, no, I'm okay. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> it's a great pleasure for me. It's our third third time on the Zoom. Yes. And I, I'm I'm yes, I don't know if you remember me, but I'm very grateful for your time. Of course I do. Yes, yes, yes. No, it's very <laughs> nice to see you. Uh, right now, I'm on Euronews. The last time on, I was on a different TV channel, I'm now on a Euronews, and we are oh. speaking. And we are speaking for our Euronews program. Great, great. Uh, I promise D that I won't take uh, uh, much of your time, and I won't. I promise it will be a 15 minutes plus minus one minute. But I want to show you something before we begin. This is my early Christmas present. Oh, 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 oh. Well, I'm very flattered. Thank you. You can see <laughs> I, I started reading. I made at the beginning. <laughs> this is the gift from my from my colleague from Lyon. His name is oh, Sergio, yeah. Sergio Cantone and it's one of the editors in Euronews. And this is the other one. I already oh, read this one. My dear chap. <laughs> and last but not least, you might quite remember this one. Because oh yes, yes, yes. This yes. one is with your dedication to me. I I remember I remember giving that to you. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful for each second with you. It's uh, more than a pleasure. Very How nice of you. Very very nice of you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, let's begin. Uh, major topic for me. Uh, on this conversation is 100 years of BBC. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, BBC celebrated 100 years and I would like you to reflect on that uh, biggest achievements and uh, biggest obstacles that lie uh, ahead of us, all of us who like to watch BBC and all of you who work on this, this biggest and the most respected TV channel in the world. Oh, thank you. Mm. Well, uh, I think it is quite an achievement to have reached uh, 100 years. Um, I'm not entirely surprised that it has, but uh, it is an anomaly in many ways. Um, it's uh, uh, the only, um, the, really, one of, well, one of the very, very few organizations, broadcasting organizations, in the English speaking world, uh, which doesn't still doesn't have uh, advertising. Um, and that is a certain uh, a achievement. Its other ach achievements are many. Uh, it's produced some, I think, wonderful programming over the years. It's at the very heart of the the British nation uh, uh, at the moment, uh, in at the present time, uh, as it has been throughout, for instance, my life. I mean, I was born in 1944, uh, and um, the uh, that's more than half of the BBC's existence, and I've worked for it for um, more than half of its existence, and um, it it. It really uh, does sum up a lot of the things about Britain, good and bad, uh, perhaps, uh, but certainly I would say good. Um, and it's it's had its big problems. Uh, it's I always feel uh, it, it it needs to be bolder than it is. It has been very bold uh, at times over the previous decades, but. It could be bolder still, and I would uh, I would be happy if it if it were, but I still uh, admire it and I like it and I I feel I'm very very proud to have worked for it for so long and I still I'm 78 now and I'm still working for it. I've got a a program uh, which um, is is broadcast every week uh, about about the news really. Um, and so you know i've uh, i've i've enjoyed it i the bbc has driven me crazy more times than i can tell you um i'm angry with it uh, quite often 
but it, it it's like um it's like some kind of relationship you know it's um you just uh the 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 link is still there and i hope it will be until i finally um shuffle off and go and do something else i have to uh to tell you that i'm one of your most dedicated uh viewers on unspun world Oh, uh, un you. unfortunately some decent guy or bad guy whatever you call it uh uploaded two of your shows on uh, youtube i downloaded both of them and i watched them again and again and uh, unfortunately i can't download i there is no way to find other shows but believe me on my hard drive i have um every your lecture that can be found on youtube in oxford oh. and some others or some some of your uh, packages for a news uh, program on doc or documentaries so on and so forth so believe me i'm i'm one of the greatest fan of yours well, you're that exists. Very, very very kind most people aren't but you're very good no 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 you're too modest most people are <laughs> most people are believe me uh, so uh, <laughs> i would like to ask you uh what is the role of journalism nowadays? I mean, old school journalism. I don't belong to the, that generation, but you most certainly do. I, I began working on the typewriting machines, but uh, I'm a new generation journalist. I'm 45. But uh, I would like you to reflect on what's the role of the journalism in the world where we try to characterize through three Ps, populism, polarization and post-truth and uh, I would like you as uh, mo uh, one of the best journalists of all time in the world to reflect on our role in the future well I'm not a great fan of those three p's that you talk about I don't like any of them the world has changed there's absolutely no question about that and people like me um belong to an older world uh, a world that doesn't necessarily apply any longer uh in the lives of 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 the people around us nevertheless i believe that there are still some really important um qualities about the journalism of the past which um, are thoroughly deserving to be uh, carried on into not only the present, but also the future. And there are many, many, many journalists around the world whose work I know uh, who do carry that on. It's not just an old fashioned thing, but um, we do need, I think, to look at the world around us and be honest about us about it and to talk about it openly and honestly and not just give our opinions but try as best we can all our put all our effort into being straightforward and honest and open about when what's going on whether it's good or bad there's an awful lot that's happening in the world uh, at the moment, which, you know, I think is really bad. But it's not a question of giving one's opinion all the time. It's trying to find out what's really happening, what's really going on, and then telling people as honestly and openly as you can. That, to me, is what journalism should be. And it's what it has been. And I, I feel that in spite of all the, uh, you know, the the demands and um, the, 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 the the kind of changing attitudes, really, um, that that is what we need to continue with and what should continue. And it's the only thing that a decent and free society is the only real journalism that keeps a decent and free society going, I would say. But what about social networks? They create uh, public opinion. We can like it or don't like it, but they do. 
for example, European Union is trying to regulate it somehow. United States, on the other hand, doesn't. Is there is there a danger there for the public opinion, for the society in general? Yeah, I think there is a danger of just ignorant um, uh, as statements rather than factual understanding uh, that's uh, uh, projected on on uh, the social media. I mean, I'm I'm a, a quite a um, a positive and um, uh, a, a enthusiastic uh, supporter of Twitter. The Twitter as it was. I mean, God knows where it's going to go and what it's going to be from now on. But the idea that you can simply um, say what you think and put it out that, that seems to be to be fine but I do I I'm very very aware that the loudest voices on Twitter are not necessarily the ones that are representative in any way of of uh, British society or French society or German society I see all these uh, different uh, elements in, in Twitter. I'm very interested in them. American, um, Australian, you, you know, I read I read as widely as I can on Twitter, but I'm very much aware that there's a lot of people that simply don't believe the kind of things uh, that some of the loudest voices say on Twitter. And I, I do think it's important not just simply to follow the loudest voices. I really, really do. I mean, when you think about the past, when you think about the French Revolution, how big a part the savage, quite vicious things that people uh, claimed about the French royal family. I mean, I'm not a great royalist, and I'm not a great, certainly not a great supporter of the French royal family. Nevertheless, it is clear that the rumours that were um, spread about them uh, weren't at all true, and that led very, very clearly to the to the French Revolution. Well, you might, a lot of people would say that was perhaps a good thing, even if the the statements about the royal family weren't true. Uh, the same thing about the Russian Revolution. A lot of it was carried forward by just just rumor and lies and accusations. I mean, the Russian royal family was quite appalling in many, many ways. And the, the way that imperial Russia ran its affairs was disgraceful. But we need to know the truth about these things and not just follow the loud voices who tell us untruths about things. So, you know, I I, I, I've, I think actually in many ways it's right uh, to try to regulate, as the EU is trying to do, to regulate the um, uh, the various uh, forms of, of uh, online discussion to make sure that it isn't just the loudest and most aggressive lies, as we've seen in the United States, that carry the way forward. Uh, I would like to go back to the BBC and you personally. You've traveled the, the world, you've been around for a very long time, you're still here. I don't like to call you a veteran of, of the BBC <laughs> because veterans are off the battlefield and you are still <laughs> on the battlefield. So you are you are not a veteran of the BBC. But you, once you've mentioned in one of the podcasts that I saw on YouTube that everybody remember you your episode with wearing burqa and entering in Afghanistan under Taliban control, but nobody mentions, in your words, nobody mentions that much your time during the 1999 bombing of Belgrade, which was a very significant event for you professionally and for me, because I do live in the town, in the city. I would like you to reflect on both uh, occasions professionally. Well, um, I put a lot of effort into my reporting in 
Afghanistan, which is why um, I, I am a little bit irritated still when all that anybody can remember about it is that I put a burqa on. It wasn't my idea. Uh, the um, uh, I was taken across the border into Afghanistan from Pakistan um, uh, by a, a group of, well, smugglers, actually, and they they said that the only safe way to do it was if I wore a burqa. Um, maybe it was unwise of me to have filmed myself putting a burqa on. I just thought it was an interesting thing to do. Um, something I don't know. Something in the in the the uh, the psyche of society finds it weird. Oh well, it is perhaps weird that I should have uh, dressed up as a as a woman to to go into Afghanistan. I mean, it's a big, such a trivial little business, you know, so unimportant. Um, whereas uh, being in Belgrade during the the bombing of 1999 was very important to me because it was something um it was quite hard to do uh, the british and american governments used a lot of uh, influence to try to st stop me being there and to get rid of me um and i just think when things are happening um, the important, the essence of of real proper journalism is to see them for yourself and to be able to tell people what's actually going on, as opposed to what governments tell you uh, is going on. No, I mean I'm not just simply because it was the British and American governments uh, didn't make me more determined to be there, or, or that's irrelevant. Uh, uh, as far as I was concerned, I mean, the important thing was to say th th these are the effects of 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 the bombing that your countries are carrying out. You are spending your tax money on um, missiles and bombs, and this is the effect that they're having. And actually, part of the interest of that for me was how little uh, impact really uh, all those extraordinarily expensive missiles were actually having on on Serbian and particular on Serbian society, and particularly uh, in Belgrade where I was, and I think that's something of 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 considerable importance and interest too. And nowadays, I mean, I've been to. Uh, Ukraine a couple of times, and I was there quite recently um, when the biggest attack on on Kiev uh, ever was was taking place. I mean, ever during this war, and I I was surprised again, um, and I thought it was important to tell people how little effect those bombs actually had. I mean, they killed a lot of people, but um, they weren't. They weren't people who uh, played any part in the resistance of Ukraine to Russia. They were just passers-by, uh, mostly. And, you know, I think it is really important to be able to to say to to a worldwide audience, look, you know, you, you're hearing about all these things. The governments that are sending them, the armies and the governments that are sending these missiles want you to think that they are uh, incredibly uh, well-aimed and um, highly uh, uh, intelligent and uh, adaptable to the circumstances. I'm telling you that they're deeply ineffective and it's just a, a question of which citizens, which civilians are being killed today. And the idea that somehow or another, um, you know, we have to follow the uh, the official line that uh, there's an intense attack, which is uh, cutting out all of the key targets. I think, um, well, I'm not a great follower of the official line. I don't like that kind of thing. And I think it's quite important to tell people back home um, what's really going on. 
Uh, thank you for that answer. Uh, we are approaching to the end, as I promised to D, but I would like you to answer three or more questions and let's make it short one, if it's possible, as short as possible. American midterm elections, is Donald Trump, Donald Trump's time up? I suspect his time is up. Um, you know, it, it's like Boris Johnson in Britain. It only works when you're a winner. And if you don't look like a winner, then people start to fall away from you. There will be um, a big su support still for Donald Trump, I'm sure. But uh, I don't think it'll be enough uh, to for him to necessarily get the a nomination as the um, Republican candidate for the presidency uh, in in uh, 2024, and I don't think he'll win. How can we read what happened to the China's Communist Party Congress with uh, Hu Jintao and all all that we can we we saw over there in Be Beijing in front of the cameras? One man was escorted out. There are speculations that he was in ill health or something like that, but he was in ill health most probably 20 minutes earlier. Mm. How do you see that event? I think uh, it, Hu Jintao was taken out in order to demonstrate to the Chinese Communist Party, the Chinese people and the world that Xi Jinping is the sole leader of uh, of China and that there's uh, the only future for China is to follow Xi Jinping. Um, I, I, I had a, um, a, quite a respect for Hu Jintao, and um, I was very, very sorry to see him being treated in what seemed to be quite a humiliating manner, to be thrown out uh, like that. And... Um, the more I've seen uh, of Xi Jinping, and I've seen him in person uh, various times, never met him, but I've seen, I've watched him close up in, in China and elsewhere, um, the more I worry about a man who wants to conduct uh, affairs uh, in the way that Xi Jinping seems to want to, to do it. And I'm really hoping that he's taken the uh, um, he's watching what's happened uh, in in Ukraine and realize that if he does to Taiwan what um, President Putin has done to Ukraine, China is going to suffer very very much indeed. Most definitely, he he's watching that quite carefully. Where do you see BBC one hundred years from now? Uh, I don't suppose it'll exist a hundred years from now. I don't not sh quite sure what will exist a hundred years from now, but I, I can't help thinking that um uh you know we will be entertained um uh, entertained and uh, educated and informed in different ways in a in a century's time. Maybe we might make it through to a to a hundred and fifty years. I hope so, but uh, I I just think that the way that society is 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 going, you know, the BBC, like all broadcasters, all of them, every single one of them, represents the the past in some way, and I think that by twenty one twenty three uh, twenty one twenty two, life is going to be so different that, alas, I don't think the BBC will be around, but. I certainly won't be around to see it. So, um, you know, uh, I, I, I just, uh, I just hope that the world um, kind of develops in a positive way, in a more positive way than it has been in in just in the last five or six years. And for the end, last question, it's not for the program. I saw something watching your documentaries and some of your packages. Uh, I can see that on your table, because I watched, for example, all of your, all of your bunker dispatch during the COVID quarantine, and I saw you on the field. Uh, you always use fountain pen, and I can see that uh, the newest that I saw was Lamy Safari, if I'm not, <laughs> if I'm not wrong. 
<laughs> yes, that's one. Lamy Safari, I, oh, I do very much like uh, fountain pens. I have them all around me. This oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, but, I, but I use Parker uh, and tell me from your personal point of view, which fountain pen is the best one in your hand? <laughs> Well, I've I've got I've got quite a few here. In fact, I've got I keep them in a little um, a little uh, sort of case here um, for me. And there's loads of them. Um, actually, I, I I confess I rather like um, big fat old Chinese pens because they're incredibly cheap. Um, and they all blow up after a few weeks. But, you know, I've I've spent maybe kind of two or three pounds on them and it, it, I've not lost anything. But the safari ones, uh, they are tough and they always work under any circumstances. I've used them uh, in the Arctic uh, at minus 30, I think. And I've used them in... Um, uh, in the Congo at uh, plus 40, 42. I mean, it's difficult to write because you sweat a bit and you the sweat drops on the page, but the pens keep on going. And I'll tell you why I use them, actually. Um, I've The fact is that the only alternative to using pen and ink on paper uh, is to use some form of 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 uh, um, kind of technologically superior uh, means of of writing an an iPad or something. The trouble is that within five years, uh, your iPad has become thoroughly out of date, and unless you're really good, which I'm not, about transferring everything, it's all gone. Whereas if you nothing destroys paper. Paper is the most indestructible substance that we know. And, you know, I mean, I've got a uh, a letter on my mantelpiece that was written in, I think, about 2000 BC in, 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 uh, in Egypt. Um, and it's still there. It's still going. And my notebooks, which I've now uh, given to my college at Cambridge um, for them to display, um, they uh they they'll last as long as books last and you know well i sincerely hope books last for a very very long time this is my pen of choice it's a parker fountain pen so that's why i was asking you that because i write everything with this parker pen i have several of them uh mr simpson really? Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Please thank Dee for allowing me to have this conversation oh, with oh. you again. And I believe that the fourth time we can meet in person, I would very much like to shake your hand. And if you don't mind, I will tweet right now that I had a conversation with you. I will tag you in with the, in the, in the tweet. I hope that is, it's okay. I'll be very honoured and I look forward so much to meeting you in person. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you much, Mr. Simpson, and hope to see you again soon in person. In person. Thank you. Bye-bye. All Bye -bye. the best. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely.